Today we're going we're gonna to take a look at one of my favorite disciples. And one of the reasons why we're talking about discipleship from the human side is simply because, you know, we tend to think discipleship, <clears throat> we tend to think of discipleship, you know, as something that is out of reach for us, you know. But Jesus says, guys, you know, we need to remember that the only reason why they were able to accomplish such extraordinary things uh, was that they were just ordinary men like you and I. Amen? And they were just people who did what all of us are asked to do, is to just put your hand in the hand of Jesus and walk with him. Put your hand in the hand of Jesus and, and walk it out with him. And so one of the things we want to communicate with this series about discipleship it's, 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 it's not about what you think. It's really not. It's, it's, it, is, it is not for special or extraordinary people with extraordinary abilities. The opposite is true. It is for simple people who are willing to walk with Jesus. People who want to make a difference. People who want to leave an impact in the earth. I want to seed you with this idea. We're not just here for us. Man, I'm so grateful for the generation that went before me and some of the examples and some of the lives that I've been able to feast on and draw strength from because they were ordinary people who decided they were going to just walk with Jesus. Amen? And they were able to overcome a lot of their, their brokenness and, and accomplish some great things for God. I have, I have been mentored by men who have come through things but stand as a testimony of what God can do with a life that surrendered to him. And so we really, really want to put the seed in you. You as a Christian must have a desire in your heart. And may the Lord give you that desire to, 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 to see yourself as not just here for yourself. You're not just here to hold on and to get through this till Jesus comes. But you're here to make an impact. Amen? You're here to, to lay down tracks for others walking, following behind you to walk in. You're here, amen, to, to impact the next generation. Can I get an amen if you heard that? <clears throat> and so we want to talk about that. We're going to be looking at my favorite disciple. I have many. I love all the guys, but one of my favorite one, the one we all like to pick on when we talk about how God can use flawed people. That's right. You guessed it. We're going to talk about Peter. <laughs> None of the other disciples' lives is as thoroughly fleshed out in the Bible as Peter's life. And uh, all of the good and all of the bad and all of the ugly is right there on display for you all to see when you read the Bible. Peter might just be the perfect example of what God can do, amen, when a flawed person decides to surrender to God. That God can use us to do extraordinary things for his glory. Hallelujah. So, and my hope for this series is that God would, <clears throat> my hope for this series is that we would be inspired to uh, recognize that whoever we are, wherever we find ourselves in the walk, in the plan of God, that God can do great things in our lives. That's all we want. That discipleship, again, does not require you to be special or extraordinary. Simply that God just looks for real people. Somebody say real people. Hallelujah. Now, I want to I want to start us off in uh, in the book of uh, Luke chapter 22. I'm going slow here just so I can make sure I cover some things. Amen. Go, look with me in the book of Luke chapter 22 and we'll get rolling. And I want to look at I guess verse 31 or something like that where Jesus uh, has some words for Peter. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, and this is what I love about Peter, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Don't you love that? <laughs> that sense of loyalty, 
being a stand-up guy. Jesus, I'm your man. You can depend on me. And if, I, if it means dying with you, hallelujah, count me in. I love it, I love it, I love it. Jesus said to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times. You're going to deny three times that you know me. <laughs> and then Peter, well, if you know how the story goes, surely the rooster did crow. And surely before the rooster crowed, Peter realized that he had already denied Jesus three times, just as Jesus said. But I'm so grateful that that was not the end of Peter. Remember I told you last week, a righteous man will fall seven times. Amen. Being a disciple doesn't mean that you don't mess up. Doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. And I'm so grateful that even after that, hey, listen, I don't know if I've ever done what Peter has, has done denying that I know Jesus. I don't think I can remember a time in my life when I've actually consciously did that. Amen, somebody? I don't know if you have. But even if you have done that, it shows you just how awesome the grace of God is, but it also reveals something about this journey called discipleship. Come on. Even the best of us and the most well-intentioned will make mistakes from time to time. And I'm just grateful for the grace of God. I'm so thankful. Come on, somebody. If you can appreciate grace, clap. I haven't started preaching yet, but you can go ahead and clap because I think that's something we need to celebrate. 